Hi guys, I hope you're all having a lovely day. Um, in this video today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I sew with knit fabrics on my regular sewing machine to make a cute cropped jumper. This is a really quick and easy project. It took me about two hours to sew this up, maybe two and a half, including the cutting out time. And yeah, I thought I'd bring you along with me and show you how I use my sewing machine to sew with knit, so let's go. The pattern I'm going to be using for this tutorial is Simplicity 1593 and as you can see this is not a crop jumper, it's actually a jumper dress but I'm going to be showing you how I hack this into a little cropped jumper or sweater um, or if you have any kind of uh, sweatshirt or jumper dress type pattern in your stash it really should work quite the same. The reason I'm using this one is I really like the fit of it so you can kind of just work from there. Uh, fine, once you have a pattern that you like the fit of, it's, I quite like to use that as my basis for doing lots of hacks because I know it's gonna fit nicely when I finish, which is quite nice. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set out the front and back pieces of the body of the dress. And I'm gonna find the waistline. It's usually marked with a little line there and you can just see it, I've zoomed in, <laughs> so there's the waistline. When you find the waistline, you can just draw a line straight across the pattern piece and cut it in two. Uh, and you're not gonna need the bottom of the uh, front and back, so you can just remove those and you're left with just the top of the bodice front and the bodice back, as you can see here. And that's what you're gonna be working with. Once you've done that, you need to place it on the fold, so fold your fabric in half and uh, pin it down and then cut out your uh, your bodice front and your bodice back pattern pieces and by cutting it on the fold of course you create a mirror image so you have uh, two symmetrical pieces the front and the back Once you've cut out your front and back pieces for the bodice, you're gonna to want to move on to the sleeve. So I've cut out the sleeve pattern here, but as you can see, it was a sh quite a short sleeve. I just went ahead and lengthened them by a few inches. Once you've cut out your two sleeves, you're gonna to need to make sure you mark on which is the front of the sleeve and which is the back. Once you've cut your sleeves, it's time to make the band for the bottom of the bodice which kind of just brings it in a bit and you want this to be just slightly smaller than the edge um, of your bodice front and back. So what I'm doing here is just measuring out the length of the bodice front which is 47 centimetres and of course you want to double that because you've got the front and the back. So, so once I did that I got the number 94 um, which is double 47 and I reduced that by about eight centimeters and I decided to cut my, my band for the bottom of the bodice to be 86 centimeters long, which is just a little bit shorter than the actual um, width of the bodice. The depth of the band is really entirely up to you. I cut mine 18 centimeters deep because I knew I wanted it to be about sort of seven or eight centimeters wide and you'll cut need to double that number because it will be, um, it will be folded over. And also, you can need to always allow for seam allowance too, so just a couple of centimetres for your seam allowance. The very last step of our cutting out is just cutting out the, uh, fa the neckband, and I've just used the pattern piece here, and you need to cut out one of these. It's important when you're sewing with knits, um, to make sure you stabilise the shoulders. So I've just put a little picture here, a little video here, of me measuring out my clear elastic to make sure it's the right length to stabilise both shoulder seams. And you can just go ahead and sew that onto the shoulder seams using a zigzag stitch. Once you've done that, you can pin the bodice front to the bodice back at the shoulder seams. At this stage, I would only be pinning together the shoulder seams. Now we are ready to sew the top together at the shoulder seams. So as you can see, I'm just programming my sewing machine here and I'm finding the stretch stitch which I want to use on my machine, which is a Singer Confidence, which is a funny name. Uh, on my machine, it's stitch number 13, but it will probably be a different number on your machine. You can just use a zigzag stitch. I just find this looks a bit more professional. Here I am just locking the stitches in before I start sewing. I'm gonna go right along the uh, shoulder seam there. Now it's time to get that neck band in place. So the first step is to fold your neck band in half and to pin together this edge here and um, where I'm pointing 
and we're going to sew that up using that same stretch stitch as before so that it's ready to be um, put onto the neck hole. To make sure your neckband is fitting really well and snugly in the neck hole, the first thing you need to do is mark out the center points on the bodice front and the bodice back. I usually do this with pins, I find that works really well. Once you have pinned in place your, uh, the center front and the center back, you can go right ahead and pin the neckband all the way around the neck opening like you can see here. Of course, there's a lot of pins here and there's a little bit of stretching involved. It's really important to make sure that you don't stretch out the uh, neckline, but you just stretch the neckband. Here I am sewing that neckband in place. Uh, you have to be really careful here that when you're sewing the neckband in place, you don't obviously sew over your pins. <laughs> so you have to take them out. There's quite a lot there to remove as you go along. And then, da da this is what it ends up like. Of course you have a raw edge bouncing around there so the next step is to top stitch. I like to use a zigzag stitch for going all the way around, stitching right on the edge there as you can see. Once you've done your zigzag top stitching, you can give the whole thing a really good press and it should look a bit like this. Now it's time to pin those sleeves in place. <laughs> so again, I think it's a really good idea to use lots of pins when you're putting your sleeves in place. Make sure you match up those notches for the front and the back because it does make a difference with the way your sleeve is going to hang. And here is the sleeve all pinned into place. I find it's a more time effective way of doing things to actually pin up loads of stuff all at once and then sew it all at once. So I would usually pin in both sleeves at the same time. Sometimes I even pin the neckband in at the same time. So I just go to the machine and sew all three all at once. And then da -da, here are the sleeves, they've <laughs> been inserted. So the next step after inserting your sleeves is to sew up the side seams. Um, I do the side of the sleeve and the bodice all at the same time. So I pin that all the way along. Uh, starting from the cuff and going all the way up to the el up to the armpit and then back down again. And then I go back to my sewing machine, use that same stretch stitch and just sew, it's a really long seam there, and sew it all the way up. Now it's time to move on to our band for the bottom of the bodice. So the next thing you need to do is fold that in half and sew it together down the short edge. So now it's time to ease in the band onto the bodice. So to do this, you need to fold your band in half, and um, like we said we need to do earlier when we cut the piece, and match up the side seams and I usually like to mark out halfway along my band and match it up with the opposite side seam and with a little bit of easing here you'll have to stretch the band ever so slightly but not too much. Once the band is all pinned in place around the bottom of your little crop jumper you can go right ahead to the sewing machine and also sew that together using your stretch stitch. The very last step in our project is to hem the cuffs of your uh, crop jumper and to do this I just fold them over and I switch to a zigzag stitch because I like the way the zigzag stitch looks, I know not everyone does, you could use a twin needle and just very simply sew straight along that edge. And then voila, your uh, crop jumper, your crop sweater is all finished. I do hope you enjoyed this video guys and it was helpful to you, I love sewing with knits and I hope you do too. I hope you got a few good ideas from here. And remember, if you do not have an overlocker, that should not stop you <laughs> from making really comfy, practical knit clothing, which you love to wear. And um, that's what I like to do. I love to wear my uh, cozy, comfy knitted things. I'll see you again soon. Bye.